Hello and welcome to the Home for Anime. I am your host, GPC, Great Podcaster Cali, and I would like to welcome you once again to the celebration of Kyoto Animation, also known as Volume 4. Today, I would love, and I actually mean love, to talk about a film that, upon rewatching, is now very near and dear to my heart. And that film is Love, Chunibyo, and Other Delusions Take On Me, which serves as the definitive finale for the Love, Chunibyo, and Other Delusions anime, obviously produced by Kyoto Animation. This anime is built on a few things, and I love all of them. The first thing that this is built on is misunderstandings. There are so many misunderstandings in this film, and that is what builds the foundation, basically gets the ball rolling for what transpires, which is basically just Yuta and Rika trying to get away from Rika's sister because Rika's sister is kind of making it seem like, oh, I'm going to Italy and I'm taking you with me. No other context, just that. It's just a misunderstanding. I'm not gonna. Sh- I'm not gonna lie to you. And overall, that just ends up being this kind of red herring of sorts. I hope I'm using that right. But everything that happens is because of a misunderstanding, whether it be a misunderstanding between the main two characters or being able to blackmail someone because of a misunderstanding. And I think that's great. It also helps to build on some of the comedy that this film has to offer, which there actually is a fair amount, Uh, especially uh, Yuta's conversations with God. I think those are really funny, especially his revelation at the end. Just had me in tears every time this It's, I would say, comedic silver. Not comedic gold, but comedic silver. And I love it. I always love laughing at these types of films because I love romantic comedies. And this is just a really good romantic comedy. I would say it has probably just as much heart as Tamako Love Story, but it's just not as deep in the same respect, but it is deep in others. And that leads me to my second point. This is great because one of the foundations of this film is cringe. I love this type of cringe. I think it's adorable. Actually, I'll use a word that a friend of my mom used to say about he and I. She would say, You guys are so adorkable. And I was like, what what does that mean? So I don't talk to many white parents anymore. But as I've gotten older, I understand what she meant. And I'm still um, adorkable, I guess. I mean, I'm mainly adorable, but also adorkable, if you know anything about me. Which a lot of people who are listening already kind of do, so... The cringe in this show and in this film has all been based on Rika's Chunibyo syndrome and her connection with Yuta because of it. And it's it's basically the same in this film other than the fact that she's battling with her growing feelings for Yuta, kind of draining those Chunibyo powers the powers that she believes that she has. And she's like, do I choose the life that I know because of Yuta? Or do I just choose Yuta and risk him not loving me anymore for becoming a different person? And I think that that's really sweet. I think that's deep because when somebody has helped you become a version of yourself that you like, and you know that they like that version of you, do you change because that person is bringing a change out of you from within you 
it's it's actually really deep and i think that it's something that a lot of people go through because it's like this person is changing me are they changing me for the better and are they still going to love me after i go through my changes which in these two cases this is just a simple matter of growing up they're 17 they're going into their final year of high school normally people get over their chunibyo syndrome toward the end of middle school but rika still has hers and she's like do i do i grow out of this is there a way out for me because i love it so much And I will say this ad nauseum. This is just really sweet. This is a sweet movie. While I would say, and I'm sure Miles would agree with me, Tomical Love Story is a great teen romance film. I think Take On Me is just a sweet film about growing up. It's just a nice way to portray youth and youthful exuberance i really do love this film and i think one thing that really resonated with me is aside from accepting the cringe not just the cringe from the show and the movie but also the cringe within myself thinking about me in those younger days I also have to commend them for, I also have to commend Kyoto Animation for this really neat creative choice that they made. I think I said this in my initial discussion of Love, Chunibyo, and Other Delusions. That is the best in terms of probably animation and action that Kyoto Animation has ever produced and I still say that now. However, they don't focus on those miraculous set pieces. They don't have these huge action scenes or super death lasers or stuff like that. Like There are a few of them but nowhere near as much as the show, which I guess part of that is because of the 90 minute runtime. But also, this story does not have a need for that. This story is very much about the human aspect. You, you have your sorcerers, sure, whatever it is you want to call yourself, but at the end of the day, they're human. They are people, and not only are they people, they're kids. And it's just kids going through what kids go through. I would highly recommend that everybody watch the show, even though I'm not a fan of the second season. I would love if everyone watched the show just so they could get to this movie. Because I remember watching it and thinking, oh, this is this is cool, but I watched it maybe a year, a year and a half ago. So knowing that I was going to have this discussion, I said, oh, I'm sure I'm just going to like this film again. I'm pretty sure, you know, it'll, it'll just be a nice little talk for me to have. But I realized how much nuance that this film has. And honestly, I have a lot more positive feeling toward it. And... I have a lot more positive feeling toward its writing. Of course, how gorgeous it looks because it's Kyoto Animation. But also just how... how simple of a story it is when you take back all of these layers that make it so fascinating to watch. It's just a simple love story. But they make it so much more. And I love that. And I went from just enjoying the movie, thinking, oh yeah, this is just going to be a, a simple talk to, I, I cannot sing this film's praises high enough. I think, I know that there are going to be people who 
can't get through certain parts of certain shows. Of course, you know, you have your Haruhi Susan Mia, stuff like that, but this one, if you can embrace the cringe, which was admittedly easier for me than probably some others, you really do come out at the end with something really special. And I'm glad that I got to rewatch all of this and gain this new perspective because I mean even as I'm recording I've been smiling this entire time and I don't smile very often this is just this was fun this was very heartwarming and I can't wait to revisit it again in maybe a year think oh I'm having a bad day and then boop put this on and I feel good for 24, 48 hours, maybe a week, who knows. But yes, please, please, please go through Love, Chuny, Bio, and Other Delusions, seasons one and two, and then watch this amazing movie. And with that being said, if you want to follow me, you can do so on Instagram at AnimeAlphaGoat. If you want to email me recommendations, you can do so at ouranimehome at gmail.com. And if you want to support what it is that I'm doing, then please consider donating to the Patreon. Also, if you want to join a really awesome community, then please consider joining our Discord server, because the people there are just really awesome. Thank you all so much for listening and being a part of this fun and <laughs> drawn-out celebration of Kyoto Animation. Uh, we still have quite a ways to go, but we're getting there. Uh, and, and yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, and I am out. <laughs>